Hey, what's up? It's just me, Dave, your host. Try to stream out. My internet's a little uh, wonky here. So if it turns into garbage, do me a solid. Spare me my time. Let a dog know. Hit the comments. Um, Bill's just hired a brand new GM. So pretty stoked on that. And uh, it seems like we could get some business done as a team if you're looking at it like that. So um, don't forget, this thing is brought to you by BillsForLife.com, um, also known BillsFan.com. Everybody out there supporting this show since it started, thank you so much. Sometimes you don't know who really cares, honestly. Um, so... Thanks for also, if you can, always follow us on the Instagram. Check this out. Bam. Follow us on Twitter. Bam. And obviously you're on Facebook right now. So numb Bills fan everywhere. You can always know when I have contact coming out. Um, and we'll always cut it real. So whatever you want to do, find us on Twitter at numb Bills fan. And I will get back to you ASAP. We have some shirts for sale for 19 bucks. If you want to help support the podcast, it's $19 shipped. If you're in Canada, I have to, you have to send me a direct message somehow, and we have to figure Canada out because somebody hit us up. And um, I'm sorry, I think his name is Kurt. Um, buddy, I don't know how to do it. Um, supposedly, it's like $20. It's like if I'm going to spend $20 to ship you something, I'd rather ship you something else with it. So here's some Bill's memorabilia here. I'll throw in with some people for giveaways. So um, thank you again for everybody tuning in. We are brought to you by PunchDrunkSports.com. It's a podcast uh, with three guys, Ari Shafir, Jason Tivo, and Sam Tripoli, and it's pretty sweet. Awesome, unfiltered podcast. Like, they're professional comedians, so they can do things I can't ever dream of doing. So... It's a very entertaining podcast, especially if you follow like UFC. You're like, ah, oh, UFC, yeah, cool. You want to know what the raw deal is on that? I don't follow UFC as high as I would, so if I want general like knowledge, I'll listen to that. Uh, they'll cover every sport. But uh, Ari Shafir is back in the uh, United States and stuff, so that's kind of cool. He, uh, you know, did some traveling. So follow them on Twitter at Punchrunk, and uh, so we are here. Brought to you by Punchrunk Sports. Dot com and what they have coming out is a new podcast network um but we've been talking about it for a while so again check them out and um other than that the bills have a a a new gm brandon bean not sure uh how stoked everybody is or not I personally really loved when the Bills were going on this whole we're hiring football guys kick with Buddy Nix. Um, I thought it made a lot of sense not to have Russ Brandon running a damn draft, you know. So, um, And I didn't like bringing in Marv Levy. Like, that was garbage. Let's be real here, guys and girls and in-betweens. Um you know, with Buddy Nix, you had the guy who was a scout and worked his way up and, uh, you know, kept dinking and dunking and, and finally got a GM. You know, he was part of the Bills way back. Um, so it was kind of neat to see him come back. But uh, I don't know. I guess Doug Whaley can't manage people maybe. He's a great scout. It says, oh, he's a great scout. So what do you think? I don't. I don't know. This Brandon Bean guy, I guess he's done everything within the front office. So, you know, contracts, CVA knowledge, anything you can think of. Uh, young guy, I really like what he brings to the table as far as somebody who already knows how Sean McDermott has worked. You know, if they've worked together in Carolina for a few years, um, he's – if there's one knock you can say is 
I don't really consider Carolina like some sustained success model franchise. I think they stuck with their head coach and they let him get the pieces he needs. Because uh, Riverboat Ron, if you let the media and everybody else, they'll, they'll fire him. <laughs> it seems like he's on the hot seat all the time. And, you know, you have a couple good playoff years and make it to the Super Bowl. But you also have Cam Newton. I mean, you have a franchise quarterback. Is he elite? I don't know. I hate talking elite or not, but is he doing it himself? No. But you ain't going to put McCown back there and, and do the same damage in the playoffs. So, really, I don't know how to judge uh, the guys over there in Carolina. I don't know anything. Being honest with you. But if you want a guy who can be on the same page with their organization, this is your guy. You want a guy who can maybe talk to the media and hold it down? You want a guy who's going to be cutting edge just due to age? I think this is the one you want. So um, he spent the last nine years as assistant GM and director of football operations So in Carolina. Um, and he's done anything from player development, scouting, you know, coaching and, um, you know, working with the medical staffs and stuff. So I think he's a well-rounded guy. And, you know, I, I've i never played football, organized football. So, like, let's be real. Should I even talk about it? Can I roast this guy for never being, like, a full-time scout? I don't know. Because if you have good people around you, I believe you can get a fast track to what talent looks like. I know for me, I hit up Eric Turner at CoverOne.net, and he'll shoot me like a text of a video or whatever, and he'll tell me, hey, watch his hips here or, you know, watch his break, what, whatever you want to say about a player. And if you're willing to put in effort, I don't see why Brandon Bean, if he has been working on learning how to scout players pretty much and, and doing that, I think that's kind of cool. That that shows he wants to be well-rounded. So, at this point with the Bills, it seems like, well, let's just try something new. So, here we are. We're, again, trying something new. Let's get guys. We're a team. I don't know if you could say if Bill Belichick is the cutting edge. I don't know. I think Bill Belichick is a maniac. He is obsessed. And he's going to do whatever it takes to make it happen. So, you know, they say, I thought Pete Carroll, I thought he had a lot of influence on, or he wanted to when he joined the Seahawks. But I thought he has a lot of influence on his roster. Um, I think it's very rare for somebody to really have a head coach just do everything underneath the sun to make it happen with with players and all that. And they say Bill Belichick does it. So if that's the case, I don't know why they're, guys come up in the Patriots organization is is guys for GM hires which makes no sense to me if Bill does it all what's he do what do your guys do Bill says do this he says jump you jump if you don't jump you're out of the building so how good are these guys I don't know but um yeah so I'm hoping this bean guy has everything together man I mean he's worked with Dave Gettleman that guy's no joke. He was with the Bills back in the day. So it's kind of cool, you know, come full circle. Um, but, you know, he took over as assistant GM for, for 10 games and they got rid of their, their general manager there before they hired Dave Gettleman. So he's definitely been tossed around the block a little bit over there. You know, he's had to adjust. He's had to do his thing. And what I like about him is they say he came up out of nowhere. Like, he came in as an intern in the scouting department and worked his way up through the organization. He's only 40 years old. This general manager is younger than our head coach and Sean McDermott. That's pretty rad. So um, I have a hard time arguing with a guy like Terry Pagula. I know that sports is not business, but when you have a billion-dollar business and you just went to college and you came out and built this billion-dollar empire – and you say, like, yo, if I want more money, I'll just dig another well or frack or whatever the hell he does. I'm probably going to listen to you when it comes to, yeah, we need to build a team. What the hell has been going on in this tire fighter of an organization at One Bill's Drive? 
because clearly it must be as crazy and unorganized as you, as we've all thought it would be. But I've been in denial because I'm just a homer. But um, let's be real. Kim, Terry, I think they're they they have resources. They're spending them. They're doing their due diligence. Supposedly there's been more guys they've talked to besides the four interviews they did for general managers. Uh, I really like the guy that I for, totally forgot his name. Just did a podcast and video with Eric Turner and his buddy there, John, at CoverOne.net. Uh, we did it Sunday. Uh, Eric had a great insight. There's actually a video portion of it as well, CoverOne.net. And uh, we went over the draft, uh, you know, how, how the, each draft pick actually and how they could be used in the system and – and Buffalo, it was it was really awesome. But we talked about this general manager possible hires and this and that. And I think we all agree we really, 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 really need to just have the team in one direction. It's so corny to say. I'm not talking about like the backstreet boys is boy van one direction or whatever you want to do. You wanna have a chuckle. I I don't know. I, I, they got to just get along. Can we all just get along? That's really all I care about. Can we get along? Can we do that? Because if we could do that, that's, that would be really meant. Um, so, all right, let's see what we got here in the comments. So, uh, Manny says good that they have someone that gets along with the head coach, Manny, Manny, I love hearing from you. You definitely keep in touch on, on, on the comments. So good to see you back here. Um, but I will say I agree with you 110%. Um, that's pretty much what I've been railing on, dude. Just let's get the show on the road. Let's all get along. Everybody in house. Um, you know, like, do you want to win? You work as a team. I'm a part of a few projects, and I'll be honest. It's probably my fault. Most likely it's my fault because I'm a little drama queen, big drama queen. Um, really, sometimes people are hard to work with. And when you stifle inspiration, bad things happen. So if you come into an organization, organization and a guy doesn't have a good reputation, you kind of wonder um, what's actually going to, to, to happen. You know, like, I want everybody's full effort and to want to show up to work. That's all I care about with these coaching hires and scouts and, and everything else. I actually like that they're going to reboot the whole scouting department. I think it's great. No excuses. When Buddy Nicks came in, they did not do that. They kept the scouts. Uh, they got, you know, different pl pro player personnel, had guys, college scouting had guys. But, um, you know, as far as I see it, it's pretty, uh, it, it, it's pretty, pretty, pretty much like, let's get along, keep it rolling, and stop the fighting need everybody on the right path. So um, Roy Moon actually just said that. I think the continuity will be fine. I think we're on the right path. I think so too. Um, Mike Brady, Bellapu gets players that fit the basic plan, and it seems to be McDermott is the same. Mike, I will say, as far as Sean McDermott is concerned, does it not seem like they really roll all the air out of the dough over there at One Bills Drive like right now? There is no stone unturned. It seems like they're really combing through everything pretty detailed. And unless they have an amazing PR department that's telling everybody within the organization, details, 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 we're talking details, we're talking playoff caliber details, playoff caliber details. I don't know, but that's their PR, that's their PR thing, you know. So, yeah, they seem to really be on the right path. At least they're selling it that way. At the same time, I thought about something today, honestly. Uh, Todd Bowles, well-respected defensive coordinator guy or defensive guy, head coach of the Jets. 
Well, he got Rex's players or, or, or Rex's players didn't show up for him in, in, in New York. And what do you think happens? Todd Bowles, well respected. He can't get his players to play for him. What's it? I don't I don't know. They're horrible. The Jets are horrible. So I just hope that, you know, Sean McDermott doesn't come in. Everybody thinks he's gonna be a savior because you should look at the Todd Bowles guy. They were like on, on, could have made the playoffs two years ago. So, I would be a little beware, I guess you would say. Um, I think you got to manage your expectations. I don't know what this team is going to get done. First thing is first, he needs to hire some damn people to look at free agents. You got to hire a pro personnel guy to get up in there and just like, comb through hey i need this guy hey i need that guy that said the roster's pretty much set for now i think unless you see some kind of upgrades um when doug whaley was here what i loved about doug whaley is you had a solid flow of guys in and out and i love that always tooling around seeing what you can do and and i think it's pretty sweet so um so right here it seems that if you look at Brandon Bean, um, a guy that can handle contract negotiations, I think that's kind of kind of interesting because you have a guy in Jim Overdorf who's been with the organization for I don't know how long, but forever doing contracts, and Terry Pagula said at the presser. Um, a couple weeks ago that, uh, you know, the Jim Overdorf, his job is to do the contracts, but it, it's not a guaranteed job. He might not have a job. It's up to the next GM. So you had this strapping young lad and hungry, uh, 40 years old, Brandon Bean as general manager. If you're Jim, are you going to stick around? Sure. Well, guess what? First order of business. You got to get these draft picks signed. So, maybe just like the Bills seem to do with Doug Whaley and Sean McDermott. Hey, do you think maybe uh, you want to go through that draft with Doug Whaley? See how you can do? Okay. This sounds neat. Yeah, let's see what you could do. Okay, and then at the end of it, they uh, reevaluate, and guess who's out the door? Doug Williams out the door, and everybody else. I do wonder if the Bills will look at a new coaching staff. So, um, I kind of, or it's coaching staff. I wonder if they're going to look at all new scouting staff, or maybe they at least interview some local scouts. Because again, these scouts all have families. These other, you know, as much as I like that they're starting fresh. Hey, these scouts have families. They have things to do. Um, really kind of got to throw it out there. Um, have a heart with those situations. But Oh, oops. Not sure if we are still live. It says the video went out. Okay, so that was weird. Sorry for the dead air, people. Um, so I think it's a I think it's a smart hire, Brandon Bean. If he's well rounded around the block, that's all I care about. I mean, does he know what's going on? Is he gonna have logic? Can you get along with people? I love Doug Whaley. I love having the football guy in there. But what's more important is it seems like when you become the big guy, the big general manager, what's that word? Manager. When I hear that a head coach has to figure out like
plane tickets and seating arrangements. I'm like, what? Wait, what? How much time is actually spent like doing that? That sucks. I I would think with the amount of money you would hire like an assistant. You know, figure out fig- what data do you need from the head coach. Send it in when you get a chance. Have some deadlines. This is this is dumb. So as a general manager, we all think that they're going to be sitting there breaking down tape all day. They're not. They're delegating duties. They're dealing with a bunch of baloney. So, really, do we need a scout? I don't know. But I don't want a marketing guy like Russ Brandon doing it. Don't want that guy. I don't want Marv Levy, who was not a scout. I don't want, I, you know, he, he's not a general manager, I should say. So, do you trust Marv Levy? Well, of course, it's Marv Levy, man. Marv Levy could say anything. I'm going to go do it. It's Marv Levy. Point being, what I look at it is, if this guy can manage people, everything will be perfectly fine. So um, just keep in mind that you have to really let this coaching staff and the general manager figure out a game plan. They will present it to you, what their game plan is. Let them figure it out. Give them some time. There's no reason... If the Bills don't make the playoffs, to just jump on them. If anything, this is where you really got to relax a little bit. Let it play out. Let them set it up. I'm not sure if if Veen was the guy I I wanted um, because I really do like the guy who can see talent. At the same time, I'm warming up to it because I don't know anything. These people have a... Billion dollar business in the Pagulas here in the NFL team. I am pretty sure that they have resources of good people to talk to. And as active as they are with the Sabres and hiring and firing too, I know it's not a great track record right now. I think it's hey, they're finding res- they're, they're finding guys. They have resources. They're spending their money. They're putting money into the city. I like these people. They're good people. Great owners. They're trying to get to the bottom of this. Give them a chance. If they think this this Bean guy and um, McDermott can have an awesome relationship, that's what we're looking for. So um, anybody out there, don't be shy. If you have anything to uh, comment in, you know, don't forget to subscribe to us on Twitter, uh, Twitter on iTunes. So, Numb Bills Fan Podcast on iTunes. Um, so, if you don't know, there's an awesome site. Eric Eric Turner runs it called CoverOne.net. And uh, he has a nice Tredavious White breakdown video that he's he's thrown up there. Um, Eric is the most detailed person I've ever met with football stuff. So, any questions you have, shoot CoverOne.net. Shoot cover one to follow. He also has a podcast. We did an awesome podcast. I think it was an hour and 48 minutes. So, hey, you can pause it, listen to it. And I think it's what I would call like a timeless podcast where you can put it on any time because you're going to get a, pretty much broke down everybody that the Bills drafted this year. And even talked about a couple of free agent acquisitions, uh, undrafted guys there. Um, just please check it out, coverone.net. Subscribe to his podcast as well. Uh, we have Kevin Masari, can never pronounce it right, damn it, um, always up in there. He does a lot of podcasts, so uh, he's great. He was from Building the Herd. He's come on our podcast. He pretty much gave us the whole like rundown of the draft going up to the draft. But uh, So I'm going to sign off of here. Hit me up on Twitter, at NumBillsFan, NumBillsFan.com. I promise uh, we have a new look coming. Looking forward to it. It's the off season for us too. Not really. But, you know, we'll keep the content pumping out. But we will be mid under construction with some graphics and stuff. So keep in touch. Don't forget, please, don't forget. Billsforlife.com, Chris Williams, Jamie Tilbury. Thank you so much for everything. So um, really appreciate it. Can't wait to see everybody at the Red Pinto tailgate this year, if, as you can tell in the logo here. Subscribe to us on Instagram, Twitter, bam. Um, and also, 
Don't forget punchrunksports.com. And if you want to support us, we have shirts for uh, 19 bucks. Go to numbillsfan.com. You can click through that to get to our Etsy account. So if not, go to Etsy.com and purchase a shirt. It helps us pay for server fees so and website costs and whatever else just to honestly keep this thing going. So thank you so much for the support and everybody else. Numbillsfan.com. And uh, check out people like CoverOne.net. You want some good info, check those guys out. PunchDrunkSports.com and uh, best Bills Mafia group on Facebook ever, Bills for Life. So subscribe to them as well or like them on Facebook as well. Thank you. Have a good night.